got signed to an agency like the darkest period of my influencer journey to Hey loves, hey beautiful people, welcome back to my YouTube channel, it's your girl Yechi here. If this is your first time on my channel, hi, my name is Onye Chianese and I'm a content creator living in Manchester, England. Today's video, we are going to unpack what my life has been for the past a year and I think about October, November, eh, December, well, halfway there. So like for the past a year and then two three months yes my move to the uk and how it affected me as a content creator this is something that nobody spoke about before i moved honestly like i came in here i was blank i didn't know what to expect and i feel like in the next months years there could be more creators who want to leave nigeria to another country and maybe this video would be helpful for someone so you can adjust your expectations it could be the same you know as my own case it could be better for you it could be different honestly but just having that idea will save you from a lot of disappointments and a lot of you know getting played you just would know what to expect so that's what i want to achieve with this video so i do hope you enjoyed this video do subscribe if you are not and let's get into everything that I experienced and how my move affected me, what I do as a content creator and influencer. So first thing that happened to me is that it became very lonely. That was like the first thing. So while I was in Nigeria, like I think I was, I was almost like in that always booked and busy face of, you know, being an influencer. Like I was always talking to a brand or working on a gig for a brand. Like daily i'm replying emails while negotiating i'm getting payments like almost every other day like i was earning good to be honest in nigeria so moving here and then when i announced my move everything just became very quiet like the traffic in my emails dropped the traffic in my dm from brands dropped i didn't have any work that i was doing for brands and here i of course i just came in here the brands here are not aware of who I am, what I do. It was very, very quiet. So like I'll wake up, refresh email, nobody's reaching out to me. And I was still open to working with a lot of Nigerian brands because I mean, I've been a creator for a while. One, I love Nigerian brands too. I have majorly like my audience, a greater part of my audience are Nigerians living in Nigeria. So I'm still very, very, like I'm very open to it because it is what will actually like it's what benefits my audience the most. I don't know if you understand this because these are products that most of them can relate to. So it was very quiet and because I didn't have any brand like reaching out to me for me to then post content. It has to be like me. Do you understand? Like when a brand should reach out to you, they send like maybe what they want you to create, like the brief. Sometimes you don't even have to brainstorm. Some other times you have to brainstorm, but this one now, everything I'm posting on my page has to be like me 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 like it's all my idea and nobody's pushing me to do it um so someone who you know you know when you're earning very well from doing something that you love and then they take away the money from it it could actually test your 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 zeal for that thing so the first thing that happened to me was that it became very lonely so um i wasn't getting nigerian brands reaching out to me anymore which is understandable because a lot of their products I couldn't use anymore or there's logistics issue of trying to get the products across to me. I still worked with a couple and I'm grateful to those ones that I worked with and here no brand like knew me. So it was a face where, you know, crickets, like nobody was reaching out to me. Um, but I think I'm done with that face now. So I think it's like a lot better. So it's something that would happen, but you have to get through that face. I'm probably going to drop more tips about getting past that phase as we go through this video. So the second thing that happened to me, which I am, um, I'm actually not sure if I fully want to talk about it because something that happened a while ago, um, but I got signed to an agency. This was early this year. It's actually not that long when I think of it, but it was like the darkest like period of my influencer journey, to be honest. So I got signed to an agency and I opted in for, to get an agency to represent me just because two reasons. Um, I was dealing with a lot with school. I didn't really have a lot of time to like handle emails. And I'm like, okay, if I'm gonna outsource any part of being a content creator and influencer, that's actually one part that I don't mind outsourcing. Secondly, um, it's a thing here. It's more popular in the UK 
than in Nigeria. People having um, agencies representing like influencers um, because it's just seen as they have more connections, they could get you better deals, they have more understanding of the market. So in terms of like negotiating for your rates, they know what you should be charging. So because I was new here, it's something I was open to because I don't know much. I don't have the connection. So I don't mind being signed to an agency. So how it works is that um, they talk to the brand on your behalf. You All you have to do is like create the content and then any adjustment, they will communicate with you. Um, and payments as well, they will take their cuts from the payments and then get, ensure that you get your payment. Um, unfortunately for me, the agency I got signed to is Scam. Scam agency. Um, so they took one of my payments and I never head back from them. We had series of emails, series of conversations, and before you go, oh, yet she didn't, you know, all this type of things. Trust me, it wasn't visible. It was not visible at the time because I had a meeting with them. Like I could see who my representative is. I had a meeting with the person. We would have discussions. So prior to the whole scam issue, the communication was very good. So trust me guys, I did not see it coming. I'm someone that I'm not new to this thing. And it's not, this is not the first time like I'm having like an agency reach out to me. Some of them I can tell that, yeah, they're like scam from the beginning, but this one, I felt comfortable with it. I went on their page. I saw influencers that they're working with. I saw like brand collaborations they've secured for these influencers. So I felt a little bit safe going ahead with it. Long story cut short, I've not received that payment to date. I wanted to do like a proper call out of the agency, but I think Karma already caught up with them because they've already been called out properly on TikTok. And now their page is like inactive. So they've closed like their page is still there, but like they don't post, nothing happens there. So I feel like maybe they stopped operations, although they're like speculations that they might have a new name and you know moved on to you know do the same things like other creators so am i against getting an agency to represent definitely not but i would just say be careful out there there are agencies that are good um do your research if you know anyone that is signed to that agency maybe send them um, a dm not email because the emails still go to the agency be aware of that but send them a dm hopefully they reply you and they're able to share their experience working with the agency okay also be free to ask the agency questions um don't just jump at it ask them questions and don't sign for a long period so that's what actually saved me my contract was not for a long period it was just a probation period and then if i want to proceed i could have signed a longer contract so luckily for me i was able to get through that but imagine if i signed for a year Ha. By now, I'll still be dealing with this back and forth because you sign a contract and they are to represent you for that period. So always be open to like testing out the waters. If it doesn't work for you, move on. Like I'm fine now handling my emails by myself. Is this something that I want to outsource and get an agency for in the future? Yes, but no pressure because I know I can do it by myself very well. I'm not too tense. And because I now know what to do to get these brands, I'm building my network here. If you're going to represent me, you have to come with clarity and yeah, you just have to be good at what you're doing. I'm not taking any shady ass agency anymore, okay? And another thing you want to look out for, this might be weird, but please ensure that the agency represents black creators because I want to believe that you moving from Nigeria to the UK, you're African, you're black. So you want to find an agency that does that. I don't want to go into details why I think this is important, but I honestly think it's important. Don't go and say, oh, I want to be their first black creator. Uh, ensure that they have black creators on their roster already. So another thing that I had to do is understand that my move kind of means me starting from the scratch in a way. Okay, so i would gotten to a point where in Nigeria that I don't have to like pitch to brands unless if it's something that is really, really like key. Most of my gigs, brands were already reaching out to me. But I, when I came here, I had to understand that I have to now start doing the pitching. I start doing things to get brands to notice me. So I was kind of like way past that face in Nigeria. And I had like brands already noticing me. So I was like on PR lists, going for events, all that good stuff. That's actually one thing that I miss so much about Lagos. 
PR event. I miss it so much. Um, so I had to start pitching to brands. So getting the emails, pitching out to PR agencies. So I did like a decent amount of pitching. Like I want to about me, I'm not shy. I'll pop up in your DM, I'll be in your email because you never really know, honestly. So pitching to companies and pitching to PR agencies is something that I had to start doing all over again. And like I said, it got me out of that lonely face because I actually got some yes. And then I actually, you know, got a lot of no's and not even no's, like no reply. I got a lot, like majorly, I got like no replies. So you still need to pitch to brands, get yourself out there, do things that will make these brands notice you. So sometimes like using their products, creating, you know, content that they normally pay influencers for. So study their page and then see what type of content that their influencers make and see how you can recreate something similar so that they can notice you. So another important thing that I did is I ensured that I did not lose my audience. See your strength as a creator and also as an influencer is a combination of two things your content and then your audience all right so i understand and i understood that i still have a lot of nigerians living in nigeria following me i can't just leave them and then i will just totally like transition and you know forget the people that are my table that i should be serving to start looking for new people no so i had a balance in my content and you know what this helped me achieve i was still able to get nigerian brands to work with so when I'm doing like my Nigerian brand fashion haul, it's because I, I'm still very much aware of the audience that I have. So even like my beauty products, not all of them are like brands that are here alone. I still use Nigerian brands for my makeup. So ensure that you're striking a good balance. You have people that are still following you that you can still sell markets to and brands you can still attract with your nigerian audience okay so it's important that you don't just you know migrate and then you know you're now doing winter looks only winter looks only <laughs> no it's not a bad thing if you decide to like do winter looks but i'm just saying that remember that there are people who are in a different climate and location from you that your table currently waiting to be served so you don't lose them and then you don't lose your engagement rate because you would still use that engagement rate to pitch to brands that are here take notes. So next thing would be, I had to create to attract a new audience. So attract people that are actually living here. This is something that I realized that I had to do at the beginning of the year. If I really want to be valuable to brands here, because it's only a matter of time for me to, you know, still be in the faces of Nigerian brands. And sometimes when they see that, oh, you're in Manchester, they're like, okay, we'll work with you another time. I got that. Or, oh, we can't get our products sent down to you within the deadline of this campaign will pitch to you, we'll reach out to you earlier for the next campaign. I got that, all right? So it's only a matter of time till, you know, you're not on the top of PR list, like top of PR list for like Nigerian brands. So you have to start proving yourself to brands here and you have to start attracting audience because they would ask. I lost campaigns, I lost some deals because my the percentage of my audience living in the UK, it wasn't much, okay? and. In a way, you can't really control that, honestly. Like, you can't really control it. But just make sure that, okay, people that are living here, if they come on your page, you can still influence them. So what I what I did recently to just attract more people living here is the fall styling series. So just, you know, attract people that, you know, are into fashion content and are looking for fall looks here in the UK. So I did the series just to attract people living here and also because i've created that i could use that to pitch to a brand for fall 2024 so create for new audience all right it's it might be difficult but i also think it's not that difficult just you know think of it the fact that you even you that you have moved you are still full blood nigerian so if you're creating content about yourself it will be very easy for you to just emit that and still be valuable to your nigerian audience but you're also creating from your location so there would still be value for people who are living in your location so when they come on your page they would still be able to you know find something and say oh yeah this is a great page i can learn one or two things from this page and i want to stay connected okay so another thing that i did that was actually very beneficial to me is keeping connections so i didn't just move and then all the brands i had from nigeria i just you know said no 
I don't know if people again, I'm not earning any pounds, telling, don't talk to me anymore, no. So keep your connections, okay? So if you have connections with maybe PR agencies or even individuals, I know that are probably like campaign managers, marketing managers for brands, keep your connections with them, okay? And still prove to them that I'm still valuable because I have a Nigerian audience. I don't think there's a need for me to like expand on this, to be honest, but um, it's just something that I did. Not all of them were able to like fall through into like campaigns, but it's just important that you keep your connections, you keep your relationships. I mean, just it's part of even being a good person, work aside, just keep your connections and keep your relationships. So now when you move, you really want to announce your presence in your country, in your city. So putting out location focused content helped me. So like, I'm always ensuring that I introduce myself as I live in Manchester and it took a while, but I noticed that I started getting like brands in Manchester. Like I started getting invited for like events in Manchester. So it can actually help you. It would actually help you because sometimes these brands just probably set for Manchester or your city and they just scroll through and try to find like influencers there. So ensure that in your, if you're making YouTube videos, your FAQs, people see your location, you post about it. Um, my first set of vlogs here was Manchester leaving, but basically I wanted to announce myself to okay, the community here that, ah, it she has arrived. So even in my posts, I'm always like putting my location, my videos, reels, TikTok videos, you see like Manchester, just so that um, these brands can see that, okay, I'm in the UK with you people. I'm, I'm here, I'm just at your backyard. So I'm available to work with you. Um, so I think that also helped me because I, I did get a couple of Manchester brands notice me. So another thing that I did to get past my quiet face is following and pitching to PR agencies. So PR agencies here, they're like cherry on the cake. They just, they just make like your journey as a creator extra sweet. Because if you're connected with them and they have like maybe five, maybe like five beauty brands they work with, there's a very good chance that you're going to work with like three out of five there so get affiliated with pr agencies here because a lot of brands outsource like their campaigns they are pr to these agencies so in terms of like invites for events getting on pr list a lot of them have to they just you know outsource it so if you're able to get on these like pr agencies radar they could put you on the list which would get you um maybe like gifted PR from once in a while from these brands, brand events. And then if you're very fortunate, a proper paid campaign. So that's what helped me. So I got, I followed a couple. So sometimes when you follow them, they post, oh, we're looking for beauty creators in this, this city, maybe in Birmingham. Um, if you're a beauty creator, send us an email. They put out like when they need like creators for at certain locations or for certain things or oh we're looking for a mom influencer living in the uk please send us an email as maddie do, 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 and i want to sell pr agency yeah they put out the email and then you can pitch to them and just you know they get to notice you and from there it becomes like a smooth sailing relationship so i have a pr agency that noticed me and so far they've been able to get me to work with two brands so it's actually really good that you get familiar with these pr agencies so finally um i've mentioned this before but i had to do a lot of pitching so i had to like dust off my pitching templates that i had before um i don't even use templates nowadays because i feel like every brand needs a unique email so I would search for the right email address. That's very important. So sometimes I have to go as far as LinkedIn to find out who the email would be getting to and then address the person properly. I think I have a video that I made a few years ago about how to pitch to brands. I, it was a, it's very funny because I, my example in that, <laughs> my example in that video is from Nigerian movies. So learning how to pitch to brands from Nigerian men yeah it's actually interesting you guys should watch it after this one it's a very old video but i think you guys will learn one or two things about pitching to brands from that video so i had to do a lot of pitching but so far so good it's it's been amazing honestly always be open to expectations on both sides it could go yay it could also go meh so be open to whatever response that you get and no hard feelings honestly just relax sometimes 
these brands that you reach out to the first time and they tell you no they don't reply might come back to you just months later it has happened to a couple of creators and i'm sure they can testify to that so i think i'm done with that phase i have a lot more traffic in my email now like brands reaching out to me and i'm so grateful to god for that now some of you might ask oh yeti how long did it take you i want to believe that the journey will be different for different people honestly because i know creators who moved around the time that i did to like maybe even the uk or like another country like Canada and they have like they've worked with more brands and they've kind of like established a, a bigger audience in that country so it could take more for you it could take less okay I honestly think there are a lot of factors that come to play here some within our control a lot outside our control so for me I would say it took about let me like September and then I started to get like good traffic in like the following the following year may april april let me say april honestly so september october november december january february march i would say like seven months honestly so like seven months for me to really start to get brands here to notice me like i said it could be faster for you it also could take a little longer for you so be open to whichever one but all these things that i've said just put it to work and then it could turn out in your favor i really hope it does i pray it does so another thing that i want to address and i know that i'm going to get asked this question if i do not answer it is yechi do you earn more as a creator in nigeria or do you earn more as a creator in the uk which one was paying you more so i think there are a lot of factors that come into play because you're looking at the like the difference in currencies as well so there's a lot but I would honestly just say I think the UK and it's because there are a lot more I have a lot more earning opportunities here so I can work with brands um, UGC is quite popular here so there are platforms that you can even sign up to and then start getting gigs from brands they are like you know apps that link you with brands so in case you want to work with um a brand in the uk and or you're searching for brands to work with that are looking for influencers there are apps that could connect you there are a lot of affiliate marketing platform for example shop ltk you could make a shitload of money every month on shop ltk all right so the earning potential here like the possibilities the different opportunities is a lot more so sometimes even when brands are not reaching out to you you can still be earning affiliate links that's a very huge way to end and there are brands here that would even offer you like affiliate uh, marketing that you could you know extend so from one collaboration with that brand you could even earn more than they're paying you for like that particular collaboration just with affiliate links it's it's different honestly so i think here there are like more opportunities for you to earn there are like more platforms for you to get familiar with and i think the the system here the markets here they are more open to working with influencers and creators so you don't most of the time when they reach out to you you don't need to prove yourself to them like they know they they know what they want they know why they reached out to you before they did so for me in nigeria it was like i almost had to prove my worth like almost every time so i think generally here i'm earning more and I think anyone would earn more just because there are more opportunities for you to earn more with here okay so i hope that's answered the question and i hope you guys enjoyed this video talking about like my journey and how moving to the uk affected me as a content creator um there are different phases in life and it was a challenging one i would not lie but i'm actually happy where i am today and how everything is working out okay i hope you guys enjoyed this one once again subscribe if you haven't and let me know if you have any more questions or want me to do any video on this maybe talking about any particular thing that you feel like yet you could have talked about this a little bit more i'm open okay so i'll see you guys in my next video bye